Hi, my name is John Zaffis, Godfather of the Paranormal, and you're watching Scared. Welcome to another episode of Scared. Tonight we find ourselves at the Phoenixville Library, located in Pennsylvania. Now, everybody knows that libraries are open to the public, and according to some accounts, that invitation not exclusive to the living. Do ghosts and spirits only exist in the pages of books here? Perhaps there's something more. That's what we've come to find out. So now, turn off your lights, turn up your volume, get ready to be scared. The concept of the Phoenixville Library all started with the Young Men's Literacy Union wanting an official library. Their books had been stored in the Church Street School Building. A small collection of books from the Young Men's Literacy Union, a private subscription library set up in the mid-1850s, formed the core collection of the new library, which was housed in a succession of rented buildings. Soon more room was needed, and they decided to sell the old building. They sent an application to Andrew Carnegie, who was then giving away large sums of money to build new libraries. He agreed and gave them $20,000 to build a larger building. A lot, 100 by 150 feet large, was purchased. In 1902, the new library opened its doors. Miss Elmira Pennypacker was employed as the first librarian. She practiced this profession from 1898 until her death in 1916. In March 1987, construction started on a new addition to the library. Renovations left the old building the same, but gave greater space inside. In 1902, the library only contained 4,003 books. Since then, the library's collection has grown to over 75,000 items. Circulation of the collection has more than doubled from the 1970s to the present day, making the Phoenixville Public Library the third largest circulating collection in the Chester County Library system. Rumors and eyewitness accounts of paranormal activity have been circulating for decades. But are these stories to be filed under nonfiction? Well, that's what the scared crew has come to find out. Uh, as far as believing in energy or uh, spirits or ghosts, I was a skeptic and I uh, didn't really think much about it until I got my job here back in 1996. I definitely do believe that there is, could be something you know, beyond just what our natural life is and there could be you know, something in you know, the afterlife and I know that this building does have a lot of history in it. What do I think is, is happening here? I think there is some sort of energy here. I don't think it's evil or uh, I don't think it'll hurt us, but I do think it's active. I think it's interactive. And uh, a lot has happened to a number of my employees that's inexplicable. I have worked for the library for 12 years. 
and I have had experiences with the paranormal for 12 years. What I feel personally are our spirits. Um, some of them negative, some of them positive. There's energy downstairs, usually uh, young energy, male or female, we're not sure. And there's energy on this floor, uh, an elderly man, beard, uh, kind of angry. You know, there's certainly been just a wide variety of peculiar things happening with a lot of different employees over you know, the course of 30, 40, 50 years. A book in the Carnegie Room in the large print section, there was a book on the table. I don't know why it was left on the table, but the book flew off the table. The local newspaper, The Phoenix, had sent a photographer over here, and uh, he took a lot of pictures throughout the building and also outside of the building. And in the middle of the front doors, was a giant green orb. Not only was there one picture, there was about nine pictures, and the green orb traveled up the door, up the side of the building, on into the sky. And uh, the paper was nice enough, and the photographer were nice enough to donate the uh, green orb that was on the door to the library, and the others uh, the paper has. When I was working Sundays, I would push in all the chairs in the Carnegie Room at the end of the day. Um, we wouldn't have any janitors or anyone else come in here after we locked up. And the Monday morning when everyone came into work, all the chairs were spread out throughout the library. Oh, I definitely think that the spirits or the energy in the building, definitely spirits, I feel, are often, um, for lack of a better term, messing with people. All right, we're getting ready to film all night at the Phoenixville Library. Nobody's leaving, Greg. Nobody's punking out. Let's do this. Now that our equipment's set up and running, Lisa Ann's gonna start it off with the first psychic sweep. There's definitely a man that just oversees. That's the feeling that I get. Like, he oversees everything that's going on. Now, I'm not getting an age or a name, honestly. I just keep getting this, he feels older to me. For some reason, I'm very drawn to the back part of this room. I feel like I'm following somebody around here. I feel like there's spirits that like to mess around. And I feel like they like to move in and out amongst these shelves over here. They like this corner for some reason. And I feel like people that have been here, they may like think somebody's walking by and see like a shadow. I keep getting shadows, that's what I want to say. Dark shadows, shadows. They're not spirits where I can communicate with them. And they're not impressions. Like I don't feel like I'm standing in this room from 100 years ago and seeing the way it used to be. The shadows are here now. Is there anything that specific about these spirits? It's almost, it's almost like a negative energy. Lisa Ann saw shadows in the room on the east wall and the north wall. But it's funny because they don't let you see them. They just hide. Is there any reason they're hiding? Do you get anything spe uh, that specific? And they like to make people second guess themselves. They like to be like nuisances you know, and be difficult. But I just, I keep seeing people running in between, even as I'm talking to you now. From time to time, there are dark shadows that crawl slowly across the walls. I just feel people following me up there. I don't see the shadows, I just feel the constant following. See, now I don't know, when I walk through here, I'm getting like a very positive feeling. This feels completely different than this to me. Like, I almost want to end this building here. 
I mean, I don't, as if this pod's not as old as this Yeah, pod. like I want to just end here. Then when I go in there, it's a completely different energy. I just keep getting this mail that's like following us around. And I just feel like a lot of people should notice things in this room. See, this room, I almost feel like if I was sitting in here, I would feel somebody like looking over my shoulder. I would feel somebody touching me. Like I would think people have said they felt touched or I almost feel like someone's breathing on me. There is definitely a, um, an old man in the Carnegie room. I agree with that 100%. I feel him all the time. He um, is pretty strong presence. And sometimes I just get that who's behind me going on. And is that always the old man or is there other spirit in this area? I feel like it's the old man. I think people may pick it up as something else, but I think it's the old man. And I feel like there's an elderly woman here who I feel like she used to like volunteer here or something, and that this place was very important to her. The lady in the main part of the library in the Carnegie Reading Room is Elmira Pennypacker, and we don't know that for sure, but she was the first librarian in this building. So it would make sense to think that some of her energy is still with us. Lisa Ann felt the presence of an old man and a lady in the room, but unlike other times, she wasn't able to communicate with them. Is that attic you were talking about? Oh, yeah. I feel like I can't breathe when I go up in the attic. It's, it's very intense. I experience a lot of different spirits. I don't know what they're doing up there. There's a lot of activity up here. A lot of activity. I also feel like I might be hiding. And I want to hop up there and see. I just get so much activity up here that I feel like I can't focus on one thing at a time. Lisa Ann was sensing activity in the attic, so I decided to see if I could get any readings on my EMF detector. Hide in the light where I'm walking, please. Lisa Ann. And let me know also if there's anywhere you want me to look. And if I go to where the electricity is, see, I go up, I get a reading. I go this way, you can see, no reading. So it's not this cable. You can see actually in there, there's like no wires there. Uh, this is the right. top of the building, correct? I did get a steady reading on the meter, but it did not appear to be from any electrical source. We pointed this upstairs in the attic and got the exact same reading. Now on the first floor, same reading. Pretty interesting. Is there something really powerful high up? <laughs> I wonder if we get in the basement too. There is such a like, ridiculously strong energy in here. Like I feel like I'm drunk and I can't stand up. There, it's a pressure, it's a pressure. And all of a sudden I feel like I'm panicked. Like I need to get out of this room. And I go this way and I'm feeling very dizzy. I swear, I almost feel like somebody had a heart attack or some kind of panic attack or something. But, like, I feel like I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing. And I feel like I want to go here, but I can't. Well, oh, why can't you? Because I'm on the floor. I'm telling you, I feel like somebody had a heart attack or a panic attack. I feel like a woman. I feel a female energy. I feel an elderly woman. And I feel like somebody's close by, but I can't let them know. I can't speak. She felt that um, somebody got hurt and was on the ground and needed help but nobody could hear her and that was 100% accurate because somebody did fall there. And unfortunately she was back there for well over an hour by herself calling out for help and no one heard her call so it was pretty traumatic. She did, I believe she broke some bones and uh, had to be uh, taken to the hospital. I don't know why this place is very weird because I don't feel like the spirits are manifesting as spirits. I feel like they're manifesting as bold of energy. It's almost like this building absorbs the emotions of what happens here and it gets trapped in this building for some reason. I know exactly what it is, okay? There's energy vortexes 
on the grounds that this building was built on. It's almost like a sponge that like absorbs things that have happened here. I thought Lisa Ann had some really good things to say. I thought she was spot on about a lot of things. Um, a lot of the things that she felt I feel all the time when I'm here. So it was really fascinating to listen to her. Now it's time to see what science reveals. station for the duration of the shoot probably about eight to nine hours it's Jay uh, it's about uh, 9 25 9 30 I've been recording for about 30 minutes now started at 9 I got two mics running two separate rooms one of them's uh, out down the hall the other one is uh, in the room where I was told there was a lot of uh, activity I don't know exactly what that means I don't want to know uh, it's better I don't. That way I don't draw any of my own conclusions. I don't expect anything. Keep it fair and balanced. And uh, just listening. Alright guys, we got a big library, three levels, three of us, let's divide and conquer. Brooke, I'd like you to go downstairs to the children's section. Um, Chris, how about you in the attic? Word. Alright, I'll take the middle floor, do what we gotta do on our levels, we'll meet somewhere in between. Alrighty? Let's do it. Word. section of the building, new section of the building. I'm going to start on the new section because that's where that's where some stuff happened and I'm a little excited to get to it. <sighs> All right, I'm going to head up to the attic now and uh, I'm going to take some still photography and uh, I'm just going to listen and observe. Okay, while I'm up here, I'm kind of going back to the very basics of, of paranormal investigating. I'm just going to utilize my senses. All right, it's in this section here. I believe down that way that there have been documented incidences of activity, namely books flying off the shelf. Another um, documented uh, flying book was uh, 10, 11 o'clock in the evening where a book came detached from a shelf, flew over two shelves, and fell to the ground in a, in a third uh, aisle. And um, if you can see over here, all the shelves have this board behind it, so it's not like I could push through to knock a book off the shelf. I mean, there it is. And yet, there's still been evidence of books flying physically off the shelf. I'm here to see if that happens again. And uh, I kind of hope it does, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Average temperature is between 72 and 74 degrees in this section. I'm not getting any uh, abnormal readings though. This was my first investigation with the scared crew, and I was ready. I attempted a couple of EVP sessions, trying to verify one of the reported claims of activity. Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'd like to see if I can contact anybody that's in the room with me right now. What kind of books do you like to read? I could read one with you. I 
This is the older part of the library. Very nice. Grand old library. This uh, was a gift from Andrew Carnegie. It's been a quiet night so far, so let's get in a reading. Get in a reading. Pointed up. I don't know what that could be indicative of. I'm getting a steady reading of about three just here in midair. I'd really be interested in finding out what Paul and Lisa Ann felt in this room. I neither had nor do I have any explanation for this. And sitting quietly, it's an important part of investigating. It allows you to become accustomed to all the natural sounds that surround you and recognize something that's out of the ordinary. Being a skeptic, I'm not gonna jump at every sound of shadow and say it's a ghost. I need more proof than that. Nothing really going on. A lot of silence. A lot of stuff from upstairs. Um, I don't know. Things just don't happen. So who knows if you really want it to happen. Okay, Children's Library, EVP session number two, standing in the back room. If there's anything in here with us, please make your presence known by saying something, moving something, or making a noise. Even though I'm part of the science team, sometimes I sense things, and I'm open to that. Great. Now we have two and a half psychics. And right now I'm feeling some pressure in here and somebody I feel a little shaky, like they're not happy about us being here. I feel that a little chaotic feeling. But it's a definite heaviness and a definite shift, like something's in this room but not in that room. Yeah, I didn't get any feelings in the attic and I didn't hear anything that was out of place. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna take some still uh, still pictures and see if there's any anomalies in any of these pictures. Hard to say. Catch some glints that are reflections. I said uh, a lot of these orbs, you know, I, I believe are dust, especially in a place like this. Given the strange readings we were getting from this room, we thought this would be a perfect place to conduct an EVP session. It has been reported in this room that a book has been forcibly knocked off the table. So, we're gonna give it a little head start and put it somewhere towards the edge, but not enough that it could just fall on its own. And we're going to conduct another EVP session to try to get it to repeat the same behavior. Do you have a problem with us being in this room? Why do you stay? It's a little stronger now. We're here to understand why you're here. Can you please come talk to us? Can you move the book that's on the table? After reviewing my EVP sessions, I don't think I caught anything. Let's see what Paul has to contribute before we close the book on this investigation. When we entered the children's library, the alarm went off. There was absolutely no reason for it. And... There's a gateway um, right by the entrance that's supposed to register when someone walks through with an unchecked library book. Where I understand it is the library books have some sort of magnetic device in the spine and when they run them through the checker, um, it deactivates it. If it's not deactivated and you go through the checker or through the doorway, the doorway flashes and alarm sounds. We just walked through there 
and the alarm sounded. And we worked with it how many times before without it? Setting set. everything up and getting everything all set and nothing. All right, right now. let's try it again. Let's just see if it works. Now is it you or myself? I don't know, I believe it was you. you okay. First. And now nothing. Well, I'm just just to make sure, I had yep, and I had my light on. That should not make a difference. I don't think I had anything on. Paul and I walked through the gate several more times, and nothing else happened. What happened that one time? Was it electrical or something else? Energy, uh, spiritual energy, ghosts, or call it what you ever want to call it. The company that we have service the machine tells us absolutely there's nothing wrong with the machinery. As of right now, I'm not getting the feeling of any one in particular being, um, but there is there is a lot. It, it's it's kind of like 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 those plasma balls. Put a nine volt on your tongue. Yeah, yeah, kind of kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, just like that. No, like the plasma balls where you feel it, you know, and yeah, just exactly. like the slight tingle kind of thing. That's without the tingle, but. That's what I'm getting from this entire place. It's just, it feels like it's a lot of residual energy. It, it's just a very low current of energy in here. But let's take a look through and see if anything else pops out. The EMF says nothing. I'm positive that, they, that someone has walked down here and found one or two books just lying on the floor when they were all put away the day before. In which area, right? Like right here. And it's nothing, you know, like it's being thrown at them. You know, it's just, again, poltergeist kids push. Playing games or? Yeah. Um, that, that's what it feels like. There is a section over by the exit in the children's library where the books are, the shelves are low. The same two books, I don't know the titles, but there's two books that are pulled off the shelf and put on the floor. They're, uh, I don't know, playing book tag. Children are known um, to be the cause of poltergeist activity because they have so much extra energy that when it dissipates, it has to go somewhere and generally it coalesces in an area where children congregate. Still nothing. In the dark, just flip the light on for a minute. Eyes oh, are killing me. What else is new? It's really quiet in here. <sighs> Put another tape in and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. As soon as we came up from the stairs, um, it's that sense of depth again, like as if you were going deeper into water. The only way I can explain it is, it feels like oppressiveness. It's right here. Nothing right EMF. here. Nothing EMF style. Still green. The nonfiction area up in the stacks was feeling very oppressive. It was like there was a weight on my chest, like I was diving underwater. I have no idea. I'm not getting any specific, you know, any reason for it. It's just the feeling. Total green on the meter. I'm feeling something over here. I don't, let me see the other side. I thought I saw a light bounce along the wall. Was it the light we're no. providing? No. Different light. Can, can you kill the backlight for a sec? While we were walking through the stacks, I noticed a blue-green flash of light up on the wall. There was no explanation for it. It's very, very heavy back there for me and very negative back there. I don't know what Paul saw, but I didn't see anything, and I didn't get any readings on the equipment either. Okay, so far it's been pretty quiet during Paul's investigation. Nothing out of the ordinary on the cameras. Just the usual amount of orbs, which we know to be dust, and um, the other investigators walking by the cameras. Nothing too spectacular just yet. I'm not getting anything up here. Go to our bed. I'm not getting anything up here.
I like this woodwork, though. Nothing at all, huh? I'm not getting anything up here. I didn't feel anything in the attic, so there was no reason to stay. Walking around the Carnegie Room, I sensed a lot of residual energy. My ability usually works by allowing me to pull vibes off of people or objects. At the library, it worked differently. I was actually getting full-blown images, like there were scenes from a movie. I wasn't in there for five minutes when what I was sensing suddenly overwhelmed me and I had to sit down. I've got this feeling in my temple like someone just took an ice pick and went straight through like that. It seems to me like someone's trying to get my attention. I'm getting the image of an older white male. possibly mid to late 60s. He's got a ring of grayish white hair, balled up on top, pretty much bald around. Very prominent nose, and big bushy white eyebrows. Does this spirit want anything? Is he trying to talk? Or is he just observing us? I'm not a medium. Is this a spirit speaking to you, or just an image you see? It's an image I see. So it's something not happening now? Honestly, I don't get this. I closed my eyes, and this is what I saw. I can't explain it any other way. The man that makes me feel uncomfortable is, I would guess, about 65. Um, he feels to me to be bald, um, dark hair. Even though Lisa Ann and I work differently, we both sense the old man in the Carnegie Room. I find it fascinating when Lisa Ann and Paul both see the same thing and when it's backed up by other people. I was just sitting at home base when Jay comes running down the hall saying, Bri, Bri, you've got to come check this out. I was looking around, I heard a noise, I saw a blue light over here. It could be nothing, it could be my eyes playing tricks, but since what I saw coincided with the noise, it's worth looking at anyway, it's worth checking out. After reviewing the evidence, I definitely found something. Check this out. While not an EVP, the evidence we got from the TASCAM does coincide with Paul's impressions as well as my readings from the EMF detector. There is someone here. When Jay called for us, we ran to the room, and as soon as I crossed that threshold, I got hit in the head with the name Billy. You know, I feel like he wants to play, like he wants to play hide and seek. It's time to come out, Billy. Is he hiding playful, or is he hiding because he's uh, nervous about us? I don't know, it seems playful. Billy was playing hide and seek with us, and Brian was getting the readings off the EMF detector that were bouncing around, like a kid running around and hiding. I was getting strange readings from seemingly random spots in the room. Paul was sensing something. Brian was there too. And that's when I saw it. Let's drop him off out here. I just saw something on the floor move, like a light, dude. As far as those little um, flashes of light that people are catching on camera, I do not think are pieces of dust or um, something kicked up in the air. I truly believe that this is some kind of energy or some kind of presence. Billy, we're not gonna hurt you. I just saw something on the floor move like a light, dude. We saw specks of dust on the stationary cams for most of the night, but this one moved differently. I'd like to think we're pretty savvy when it comes to recognizing dust and not mistaking it for evidence. We reviewed Jay's footage like a hundred times, and there are other instances throughout the night where there's dust floating through the air. But is that what this was? I don't know. 
I know a lot of the other guys are confused or even convinced, but I still think it's dust. Come on, does dust move like that? It moves too fast. It's too direct. It's, it's almost purposeful to be that spinny crazy. The psychics on our team operate differently than I do, but it's always good to work alongside them. Bad wiring? You know, look, every time it goes up, we get a reading. <laughs> and that's on every floor. We all got odd readings on our EMF detectors. The EMF readings were bouncing up and down all over the place from spot to spot to spot. When I first got into the room and I first found the spot that Jay said, hey, I saw something over there, mm. I was getting readings. After going you know, back and forth across the room a couple of times, going back to that first spot, no readings, completely dead. So right here is an extremely strong energy vortex that just, it's almost like a sponge that like absorbs things that have happened here. We found out after doing some research that the library was built primarily on limestone. Now limestone has been suspected to either cause or contribute to paranormal activity by acting as a conductor. And right after that, I saw two red lights on the ceiling and I caught that on camera too. Can you say something to us? Can you do something for us? Can you show yourself, Billy? What the hell was that? Was that light from outside that came through that window in front of you, Paul? In front of you, up there, straight ahead. No. Yeah, I saw those lights too. Can you say something to us? Can you do something for us? Can you show yourself, Billy? What the hell was that? I don't know what they are. They look like dancing orbs, very like a laser light flashing and going really fast and zipping around people's heads. I mean, I was really excited. After all this time and all these years, it was the first time that I ever caught anything on camera. I totally got stuff on tape. There's no doubt. Now at the time, I didn't see any red lights myself. So Brian and I went outside to make sure Jay wasn't seeing like, I don't know, like lights from a passing car. Okay, we're now in the front of the library and this window is actually pointing in to the spot where Jason uh, saw those lights and where we witnessed some anomalous red pinpointed lights. We're trying to figure it out exactly where it's coming from. Now, a car is passing by. At first, we thought it might have been the brake lights, but that can't be so because the library itself is on a raised hill. All the cars that pass are below that hill line, so any brake lights we would see wouldn't make it over the hill into this window. There's only a, about, I don't know, maybe eight to nine inches of space that any light from outside can get to. Does that debunk what we saw, or does it prove that it's something supernatural? I'm not willing to say either way just yet, but at least I know it wasn't brake lights. Now, going outside allowed me to eliminate what it wasn't. I still don't know what it was. After being here for 13 years, uh, as each year progresses, I have more and more experiences that have led me to believe even more so that, that something is, is going on here and there, there is energy, there is another world, and uh, I, I guess at this point I'm part of that other world. I personally picked up two different spirits on the two different nights that we were there. Both Lisa Ann and Paul were sensing things all night, and the meetings were getting odd readings as well. There was definitely something there. Although I find all of these events intriguing, I'm still not convinced that the library is haunted. While I didn't catch any scientific evidence, a part of me felt like there was something there. Is it haunted? Yes. You have the old man, and you have Billy. Even though some of our evidence was compelling, I still feel we need more time there to come to a definite verdict. There is definitely paranormal activity there. I saw it. I caught it on film. We are looking to renovate the old Andrew Carnegie gift to the community and add 22,000 square feet to this building. And uh, I've read and heard stories that when you do renovate um, old structures or any structure that has uh, energy in it, spiritual energy that's haunted or whatever, uh, you tend to disturb that element and uh, I fully anticipate that, that we're going to disturb whatever's here and I'm sure we'll see scared back here to uh, give another investigation. All right, we've concluded our investigation of the Phoenixville Library. 
You know, it's impossible to make a determination after only one or two nights of investigating, but we all walk away with our own opinions. And whether you're a psychic, a scientist, or a skeptic, we're all looking for answers.